Hi, so I get asked a lot of questions on Instagram and Facebook, a lot of emails, a lot of phone calls, um, with a lot of questions from different people at different stages in the property journey. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is, every couple of weeks, I'm gonna do one of these videos, um, answer your questions, hopefully educate, um, motivate as many people as I can. So we'll do a few questions each time, so let's see how it goes. What strategy should I do? So this is the million dollar question, to be fair. There's no black and white answer to this. There's no right and wrong. There's so many different strategies in property. And it depends. It depends on your income levels, how much money you've got to deploy. It depends on how much time you've got to put into property. Are you full time? Do you have another job? It depends on your attitude to risk, your experience levels. Um, there's so many different factors that come into this. So what I would say if you, sort of struggling to determine which strategy is the right one or the best one for you. Educate yourself first of all on one or two different strategies. Don't look at everything because the second you look at everything, you get analysis paralysis. All of a sudden, you freeze, you don't take any action because there's that many different people online talking about that many different things. I would just say educate yourself, pick one or two and run with it. You know, um, don't overcomplicate it. If you're brand new to this, probably just do pilots, maybe it's HMOs. Don't try and do a huge chapel conversion or you know a care home, a commercial, a resi, something. You know, walk before you can run. Would be my advice. Um, be careful who you're taking advice off from it as well. There's a lot of people on this, on social media platforms that just they chat shit. <laughs> Excuse me, language. Um, they're not doing what they say they're doing. They're not practicing what they're preaching. They have very little property, very little experience, yet they're offering to coach people. So be wary of who you're taking your advice from as well. Um, pick a strategy, run with it, and that's it. Just on that point as well, you know, taking no action is the worst possible thing you can do. Inactivity or lack of activity is an absolute killer. Um, you will miss opportunities, you'll miss, miss capital growth, you'll miss a lot of opportunities just by not taking action. So my advice would be, you know, just pick a strategy and bloody run with it. Stop messing around, you know, go for it. If you're in a position where you don't have enough money to get into property, I'd rather just be real with you. It's gonna be hard. It is gonna be difficult. Um, it's obviously a lot harder for you than for somebody who has loads of money. Uh, that's pretty obvious, but there is ways to do it. My advice would be to you would, would be a couple of things. One thing would be to look for angel investing. Look to friends and family, people that are close to you first. Um, reach out to them, tell them what your plans are. Um, don't be going into them blind. If you're not educated on property, don't be going speaking to people. Educate yourself first, but then go and speak to them. You never know what might come from that. Another harsh truth would be look at the job that you're in. Are you in a low paying job? Can you find a new job that's better paid? Can you start a side business? Generate some income. If you actually look, if you look for the excuse, that's all you'll find. If you look for how to do it and you look for the positives and you look at the fact that loads of people have done this with no money and you believe that you can do the same, that'll probably happen to you. It depends on what you believe. So yeah, start a new business, start a side hustle, side job, something like that, go into a better paid job. Another one is just restructure your finances. If you know you're getting paid two, three grand a month, but you're spending two, three grand a month, you maybe need to look at your spending habits. You maybe need to look at what you've got going out as the ways to save money on what you you're paying out at the moment. Do I use my own money or do I use angels? So a bit of both. For years and years, up until probably end of 2019, I use my own money. I am very fortunate, like I say, I've got a couple of businesses that it's, you know, I've been self-employed since I was 19, you know, 12 years I've been self-employed, um, working my arse off to get where I am, and that's provided a good income level for me. So I've, I've invested that income in, into property. Um, so yeah, I've used my own money for um, quite a few years, and I was actually approached, 2019, start of 2020, got approached by three or four different people, who worked with two of them. Um, where they invested money with us, we give them a set return, the full money back at the end of the term. So that was done, um, like I say, 20, back in the 2019, and I have two of those. So majority of my own money, each year, double figures for, for quite a few years, um, with my own money. So majority of my purchases are with my own money, there's only a few that we use the angel finance for. But it is out there, if you're looking for it, reach out to people. It, it, it is out there, 
you've just got to be credible and you've got to know what you're talking about and you've got to have a proper proposal for them. Yeah, I do get asked this and unfortunately I don't have much experience in it. I do get asked a lot. You know, for example, people in London contact me and they say, you know, I've only got X amount saved up. I can't buy in London. Where would you advise buying up north? I only have bought in Newcastle, the North East and Northumberland because that's where I'm from, that's where I live. All I would say is just be cautious and make sure you do a lot of digging and due diligence. If you're buying out of area, speak to multiple letting agents, multiple sources, multiple people on the ground. Don't just find one on right move, the numbers work on and go for it because you could get stung. You know, maybe just have a drive around the area at night, look at what the area is actually like. Do your digging, ring a few different letting agents, would this rent, what would it rent for, what's the street like. Look at crime stats online. There's loads of ways to do your digging, but I would just be cautious if you were doing that. Maybe it's a GAV with somebody in that area you can maybe consider. But you know, I've never done this myself. You know, I've only invested where I live for obvious reasons. But um, just be cautious and know people who, who, who do it and who've done it successfully in quite a few different areas. So it can be done. It all comes down to putting the work in ultimately. You've got to put the work in by speaking to the agents and speaking to their sources and speaking to people in the area. Nobody's just going to give to you an amazing BRR tomorrow. You've got to put the work in you've got to be prepared for that i think unfortunately some people think property is a get rich quick scheme we can get rich in seven days and all that nonsense that is not true it is not true it's a get rich eventually not a get rich quick